Fisker's brush axe is a very nice cutting tool to use and I gotta cut up a pile of light scrap now don't get too excited about the performance being shown initially this is damp MDF wood which is just above cardboard in difficulty of being cut so you can chop up massive sections of it with very little effort uh, this is some OSB also which has been damped and swelled so it's have been softened considerably as we move on to some actual dimensional lumber uh, the performance does start to slow down quite a bit and it becomes more realistic of what the blade actually cuts like now this blade generates its cutting efficiency from more of the blade thickness uh, rather than the actual sort of power so it penetrates well because the blade stock is very thin like a machete rather than penetrating well because it can achieve a lot of power like the last blade that I talked about which was made from Joe Colton there are upsides and downsides to this approach the upside is because the blade stock is so thin it requires very little power to penetrate into the wood so you can easily chop and cut with this for long periods of time with low fatigue because again it takes very little effort to swing this even though it's a rather long blade big handle on it it's very light because again it has very thin blade stock the downside though is that that very thin profile has almost no wedging or splitting effect on the wood that means if you're not cutting through the wood in one hit you have to work with very tight notch formation which means you have to be very precise and because you can't really generate a lot of power because this just is a very light blade uh, when the wood starts to get difficult uh, to be cut you start to run into some difficulties because again you really can't bring a lot of power into this cut as you'll see here this is a harder piece of wood it doesn't really matter how hard I try to swing this blade again it's very light so again I'm forced to work with very narrow very tight notches which drives the requirement for precision way up so when I start getting into this type of wood this is not the blade that I'd want to use I'd go back to Joe's blade uh, which I can swing a lot harder generates a lot more impact power and has enough wedging that it will be much more fluid in this wood so even though I'm putting a bit more effort into the swing the overall fatigue rate and cutting efficiency starts to switch to being much better towards Joe's blade than the Fiskars when you start moving into wood like this but again this really isn't what the Fiskars was made to do now moving on to some natural woods I'm going to talk about two almost completely different ways in which this blade doesn't tend to perform very well one is on the thicker large pieces of wood the main problems that I'm having here is that I'm having to work with relatively low impact energies I can't really put that much force into the swing if I do the blade will just wedge that dramatically that I'll spend too much effort getting the blade out versus actually cutting the wood the problem becomes though when you have to work around large knots as I'm doing when I'm sectioning this piece of wood you again can't put the kind of power into the blade to sort of break the knots out of the cut or cut some of the sections of wood away from the nuts and you start to get bogged down in terms of having to do a large amount of hits and the other thing is because it doesn't have that significant momentum or inertia you can't really cleave the wood off at the end when you're almost into to the cut which you will see me do many many times with different blades and you have to do a lot more cuts the other almost exact opposite problem comes when you try to cut some rather hard but small sticks and this is just 
some sun-baked pieces of wood. The reason why the penetration is low here and the blade is almost bouncing off some of these woods is that this came with a very heavy initial angle. It's over 20 degrees per side. I've never bothered to change that for reasons that I'll talk about in detail later in the video but basically it's one of the reasons why that initially you might expect very thin blade you can move it rather fast that would be rather good for cutting these small diameter hardwoods it's not because the edge angle is rather high but that does have some benefits that I'll talk about later on which is why I've never like I said reground it now in this little bit of work where I'm just breaking down some brush into stuff that I can actually keep to burn for beach fires and other stuff which is just leafy vegetation which I'm going to compost you'll notice a couple of things one is that the cutting ability is lower than a lot of the other blades that I've talked about and that's mainly because the edge angle is so high so this blade doesn't as easily sweep off all the limbs as some of the other blades like Joe Colton's chopper that I recently talked about would much easier sweep these off However, notice the utility of that little hook and how much easier it makes moving all the wood around. If you've never used a bill hook or bill hook style blade with that kind of hook on top of it before, it's kind of really interesting once you really start working with the hook and how easy it makes a lot of this woodwork. Now, as a quick note on sharpness, all the blades are like this during the work easily be able to cut single stalks of grass. Back to doing some brush cleanup again to generate a little pile of wood uh, that can be used for campfires and beach fires and just some basically leafy vegetation that will all be composted. This blade doesn't have that nice ease of cutting that uh, Joe Colton's does and some of the other blades that I've talked about again mainly because the edge angle is so high on this one and I haven't reground it yet for reasons uh, of mainly of durability which I'll talk about a bit later regardless I'd still take this blade over Joe's for doing this type of work because of the ease of which I can use that little hook on the top of this blade to move wood around. That means I have to do less bending, less stretching, and I can just grab the wood and move it around with that hook, just like an extension of my arm. And that comes into play very often when I'm doing brush clearing, which is why the Fiskars is a very nice tool to have around. And if you haven't really used a bill hook style blade, um, I'd kind of recommend you at least try it out and give uh, some specific application to just using that tip. Now, uh, some people might make the argument immediately, well, can't you just use sort of, you know, that reaping hook style tool that a lot of people use? Yeah, you can, which is essentially as you make a little stick that has a crook in the top of it, and you do that with your off hand. But as you can see, I'm using my offhand here to actually control the wood, move it around, and letting the bill hook be able to do that as part of the knife's cutting is very nice. So it has its own uh, advantages. Again, could I bring the edge way down uh, to say around 10 degrees per side so it would have the same kind of cutting ability as some of the other blades? Yeah, I could. But this blade does a lot of very close contact work uh, next to the ground because of the hook. And I leave the angle relatively high, mainly for reasons of durability. It wouldn't, so it doesn't get too chewed up when it's coming into heavy contacts. And at the end, I'm able to produce not a very big, but little pile of sticks and big old pile of brush to be composted. And here's just another example that you can see how often that I use the tip itself, not only just for cutting, but for specifically just moving the brush around. Now right here what I'm trying to do is cut away a lot of the brush from some of the actual uh, trees that are growing in these areas and do some very selective uh, pruning. 
the hook is nice for that, but also just for sort of breaking up a lot of this material uh, and moving it around as well. Easily handles larger obstacles, and that kind of thing isn't as trivial with your common blade patterns. But it's very easy to do with this because it puts the point at a 90 degree angle to the blade, which allows you to stick it in, capture, and move wood around. And there are actual forestry tools which are specifically developed for that. But like I said, you can do a lot of work with this, and it's very versatile because of the blade shape. Does it have disadvantages? Yeah, if you're trying to do heavy chopping on an actual platform, that kind of hook can get in the way because it can bury itself into the chopping block when you don't want it to. But again, it's not really made to do that. It's more for this type of work where you want the versatility of the hook, and it's not going to be a drawback. Now, on an end, uh, just some quick comments about the raw power of this blade. It's not going to get up to blades like the Excalibur, uh, because again, you just can't put that kind of raw power into the cut, because the blade will simply bind too much. But it can easily do, say, a three-hit chop on a 2x2 two two with no concerns.